Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the HGUC or High Grade Universal Sentry Sazabi. Now I have been looking for this kit for some time. Now there was another option for me for me um, in Gundam based Korea, they always had the titanium finish version. Problem is that would be the only one that they would get in stock for some reason and the price was like more than a hundred dollars as far as I can as you know as far as I can remember. So I Oh, sorry about that. So I decided, like, I'm not gonna buy the titanium finish. And I was waiting and waiting, and finally, after like almost a year, they finally got the restock of the HGUC Sazabi. Now I'm guessing it's because those, because of the RG Sazabi came out. I'm pretty sure there are people who wants to get the HD version as well for their collection. Hence, they made, they gave this thing a, a finally a restock. Now once again today, it, uh, I'm going to be going at the Gundam Expo Korea. Hopefully, I'm going to get the RG Sazabi, and hopefully I don't break anything, especially the shoulders, and a few more HD kits if possible. Um, so yeah, so after this review, I will be, you know, preparing to go to the expo, basically. Anyway, so this, the main reason I got the Sazabi, not only I want, I wanted to get this kit, but also just to make a few, just to be prepared for when I have to review the RG Sazabi, which will be tomorrow, and the future upcoming HGUC Moon Gundam and Vargul, or Vargul, whatever, and so for the, yeah. Alright, now let's get on to the review. Now once again, this kit is, despite its age, I am actually really impressed by the kit. The, the quality of the kit is pretty decent, uh, the color separation is also pretty good. Uh, the only issues are like really minor issues. Um, now once again, my setup is very bright right now for some reason. I don't know why it's never this bright usually, but you can see all this you know, glossy tan going on. But yeah, it's just a normal red. It's not pink, just your normal, I guess, crimson red or something like that. Uh, yeah, tomato red. Let's put it that way. It's your typical tomato red. This is Zabi. Okay, now let's get on to the review. Now first of all, I'm going to go with components as usual. Now first of all, uh, you get the Sazabi, of course, so I'm going to put this back a little bit, and then let's see what we're you're supposed to get. Now, I'm going to go with the leftovers, as usual. Leftover polycaps. This thing does use a good amount of polycaps, uh, but you only have two left. So, yeah. And then, this is not a leftover piece, but you probably won't, won't be using it unless you have, like, one of those plastic uh, tubings, like the one that you get from the Yakudoga HG kit. Now, the problem is, they don't give you that with this kit for some reason and yeah I don't know why but that's how it is so yeah so I, I just want you to know that the the funnels that come with this um, you don't it's they're kind of separate so you get uh, six of these as the open up individual ones and you get a two a two set of the three um, three funnels that's folded in inside there so that's that's not like individual single pieces those are two big pieces so yeah uh, here's the sticker sheet, as I mentioned on my Facebook uh, review. This uh, only comes with, I believe, the basic three stickers. The mono eye, obviously, and then you get the Zeon sim Neo Zeon symbol for the shield, and it's uh, Shara symbol's like personal symbol that goes onto the front skirt armor, which I did apply right over there. So yeah, that's the only three stickers you get, so that's pretty good. Alright, now for the equipment. First of all, obviously, the shield. The big gigantic shield you get a shield connector for that and you have these uh, extra grenade launchers or missile launchers and then you have this part of the component where you can actually store um, the beam the beam axe but the problem is now um, you have to remove the beam part as well so I just wanted to let you know and then you get for for the beam axe this is the like the saber mode and then you have or tomahawk whatever and then you have this part for the beam axe mode so you only get one set you only get one so you don't get like a double axe set like like how the Sinandra gets but yeah you only get one but it works pretty well and then you get two beam savers uh, two beam saver effects and two beam saver hilts now I put one um, on one hand just to make sure to show you guys an example how this works and yeah, two reds, and you get this yellow one with some extra effects going on. Not your typical straight, you know, clean beam saber effect. And finally, you get its beam rifle slash beam shotgun, sort of. Um, this one comes in entirely black, which I always, I always thought this was supposed to be gray, but oh well. 
Uh, okay, now let's get on to the review. Now, I am aware there are some reviews out there, like picture reviews, video reviews of the RG Sazabi, but I'm not going to mention it because I am going to review one myself as well. Uh, hence getting the Sazabi, so I'm pretty sure, um, hopefully my review will be more helpful in terms of like showing the difference between the HG and RG. <coughs> so yeah. Alright, now let's get on to the review. Now, this kit is pretty big. Before I start out, I just want to show you guys how the bulk is. Now, here's a typical HG kit. You can see how big the size difference is. Not in terms of height, but also like the bulk of it. So you can see it's like all uh, the HG local type is like you know really really small compared to the H compared to the Sazabi. So that's how the size difference is. All right, now let's get on with the head. I don't know why how I don't, I don't know how like the strong light actually affects the color on my video, but yeah. Okay, the head was pretty okay, pretty basic build. The mono it technically does move around. You can you can move it around with stuff like these, or you have to take off the top part and then move around. But I don't think that's really necessary. So the head can go down that much, a really good amount if you ask me, and then up that much despite its design. Um, yeah, and then the neck joint is not a polycast; it's just a plastic piece. Uh, 360. I don't want to recommend this because it because of how should I say this? I guess it's the chin. The chin part actually gets. Um, tangle up in on these cables, so yeah, and yeah. So I also heard some people were telling me that the HD version is actually more uh, design accurate to its original art style. But oh well. Okay, now let's look at the main body. The body, nothing too special. It's not, not there's no actual app crunch. This is just the ball joint between the main body and waist moving around. So, uh, you. Honestly, if you force your way around, you can do a 360 on the waist, but I don't want to do that because, once again, you're forcing it, so you might break something. Um, so that's it. And once again, all, all these yellow parts you see are uh, color-separated pieces. So, once again, pretty impressive for their time. Um, the shoulders. Now, unlike the RG, this thing does not have... You don't really need to worry about breaking. However, there is one issue with the shoulder instead of breaking it. Um, I don't know what's going on. It could be just mine, but the the arms are tend to pop out, or should I say, the shoulder tends to pop out from the peg for some reason. If I do a certain pose, so just letting you guys know, they can move that much. The arm can go 90 degrees to the side. You have a typical 360 twist, and the arm can go 360 if you want to do so. And then you have a 90 degree bend, I guess. And of course, for the hands, you get one open hand for the left hand, two multi-purpose hands hands for the left and right, one trigger hand uh, for the right, so that's, I forgot to mention the hands. Okay, now let's look at the backpack. The backpack is pretty, pretty basic. You have these fuel canisters which are connected to ball joints. You have the funnels, once again, um, can move around. I mean, these parts, this is a single piece inside this black piece, and the funnel parts, like, the storage area can actually do, does have some articulation, go up that much, and then about like, huh, about a 90 degree or a 95 degree, um, radius I guess that's what you call it that can move around like this uh, so the way how this works is that you can you have to pull this part up and then you can open these section up to reveal the funnels inside you can see that they're all a single piece right over there so that's that okay now let's look at the waist section the waist section nothing too special it's your typical uh, or basic format just larger now the back skirt does move for some reason kind of reminds me of the Zio um, the side skirt also can move around, have your thrusters, and the front skirt, this time I believe they don't come in single piece, yet they come in a, as individual pieces, so keep that in mind. And you have, um, the, the, the leg parts, now you don't have a side swivel on this one, but the arm, leg itself is connected as a ball joint, and can go 90 degrees up front, and then you have a, about a 90 degree bend, considering how the bulk of this kit, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and you can go less than 90 degrees because of how the structure is right over here. And once again, in s under the size legs, uh, you have all these thrusters going on. All right, another extra um, detail would be that you can see there the beam saver hilt like, that looks stored inside, but that's just how it, the way how this is molded in on this part. So um, this thing does not actually pop out. Okay, now let's look at the equipment. Now the equipment. Uh, I guess this is how it works. The beam saber uh, here, or sabers. Now, this is the basic beam saber. You can see on one side there's no hole, the other side has a hole. Because that's why 
uh, on the hand there's a peg right on the inside the hand so you can have a firm connection so once again you have this in you won't have a problem same goes for the beam axe once again this thing also has a hole right over here for the hand and also if you look at inside the shield there is another peg over here so that's where you can actually store it as well like this but I'm not gonna do that right away just want to show you guys how long the beam axe or tomahawk is or it's in its saber mode now this is um, the way how you connect this is just slide this through in however I'm having trouble doing this in front of camera so once again this is a very very long weapon it's almost almost tall as the Sazabi itself okay uh, the now once again these are beam sabers so I don't really want I'm not gonna demonstrate them too much but I just want to mention that because of how the arm structure is um, the arm guards are like this part they might get in the way when doing certain poses. Now you can see it's not, it's sort of colliding right here, so it may look like it's on an awkward angle for the when you hold the beam saber. So just keep that in mind. And also for this also kind of applies to the beam rifle. Once again, this does not have the clocking effect. It's an HG kit. Uh, once again, it, it's at least better than the beam rifle. I mean the beam saber. So yeah, you won't have much to issue with this. Okay, now the main issue I have, other than the shoulders, uh, the popping out, is the shield. Now you can see I put this part up now because, oh right, this play part also the moves, um, is the shield. Now once again, this is a sticker. Uh, now you have two options, you can put it on the side or on the back. Now it really depends on what pose you're trying to do, but if I put it on the side, and this is how it works. There's a peg here, there's a hole on each arm, just plug it in. Kind of works as how the or, uh, the prototype goof works on its HG format, the shield connecting. Now here's the part. It as you can as you just saw, this part collides with the shoulders a lot. So this is why I put this part up. So once you have it on the sides, kind of hard to move the arm itself or even the shield itself. You can't bend the arms at this point. So this is like the main problem. So you gotta like really plan out your posing or you gotta like modify the shield connecting way how it connects you can also put it on the back once again it usually tends to collide with the backpack so um yeah that is the only main uh, issue i have with the hguc Sazabi. so once again um that's pretty much it for the review one um if you can find the hg Sazabi, it's a in terms of quality it's a very good kit for its age it may not have like the double jointed bend on the arms and legs but however for what it is when it was out and even up to this point it's a very very good kit there's like really minimum basic stickers everything is like color separated so yeah and now uh, since I reviewed the HU Sasabi I am actually pretty um, excited to build the RG Sasabi and review it and compare the two together anyway thanks for watching the review this was the HUC Sasabi review if you guys got any questions or requests leave a comment below I still have more kits to buy and build and make reviews out so please stay tuned until then, see you guys next time.